Happy Wednesday morning to you. It's time for Morning Manna. What a wonderful morning it is. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. Uh, I've already had prayer with uh, our congregation at 715. Love for you to join it sometimes. 715, we have prayer calls, 715 to 730. We're on a roll today. Today is fast day as well, and it's time for Morning Manna. We're going to give Facebook Live just a few seconds to get our audience together. And then we're going to jump right into the word this morning. You already know, morning man, fam, that it is all about harvesting in a dry place this week. We're learning how to harvest in a dry place this week. So let's give uh, Facebook uh, Live just a few seconds to get the audience together. And then we're going to jump right into the word. How are you today? Are you fasting and praying today? Uh, for new life, it's a fast day. Wednesday is a fast day. Uh, from 6 to 6. Uh, don't know about you, but I find great comfort in prayer and fasting, and it just gives you power and need to have a regular fast time, a regular prayer time as well. So we got a word for you today. Let's give it a few more seconds. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the text to talk, and then I'm going to give you the takeaway. What you need to do is share the manna, give the hearts and the lights, give the revelation that you get in the manna, and that's how we roll together, manna fam. If it's your first, second, or third time joining us uh, to the morning manna fam, then let us know. We'd like to shout you out, say hello to you, good morning to you. What a great day it's going to be today, hump day. Okay, now, the text to talk and the takeaway today in this whole series that we're dealing with, harvesting in a dry place. Let's talk about this morning. It's a mirage. It's a mirage. The text is 1 Kings 17, 7b. 1 Kings 17, 7b. There had been no rain. Let's stop right there. There had been no rain. Now, according to... Um, reported uh, sources from the paper, uh, newspaper. They said that this is a uh, in the um, Hudson River in New York. Uh, fish are dying, and I want you to listen and get this. They are suffocating in water. Fish, according to news reports, in the Hudson River in New York, are dying because they are suffocating in water. Have you ever thought that a fish could suffocate in water because of lack of oxygen? That's like you and I walking around now, right now, and dying because there's no oxygen in the air. There's no oxygen in the water. Had you ever thought of that? They're literally in a mirage of an environment that is supposed to sustain them. They're in a mirage of a context that is supposed to keep them alive. And I want to argue this morning. I want to make the case this morning. Some of you may very well be in a mirage. You may very well be in a mirage in your marriage. It looks like it's all right. All of the trappings on the outside look great, but it's a dry place. There's no oxygen there. There is a mirage and you're literally suffocating in that situation. You got a job. It's not the job God called you to and it's not the job you want and it's not the job that's providing for all of the creativity and God, what God wants to do in your life. It's a mirage. You're suffocating. It looks like you ought to be living in that context and in that environment. 1 Kings 17, 7b says there is no rain there. It looks fine. Let's come on, let's press it. My finances, I got a bank account, but it's a mirage. Ain't no money in there, not at least to the amount that can do the provision that I need. It's a mirage. I have relationships. I got relationships, but they are, you got it, a mirage. All of the trappings look great. Everything is squared away. But at the end of the day, I'm a fish in water suffocating because there's no oxygen in my context. There is, it's a dry place. It's a dry place. When you look at your situation, 
Ask yourself the question, what area in my life right now could very well be a mirage? Everything looks like it ought to be great. Everything on the outside to, uh, to the outward appearance, to people checking it out, they would look just like they're looking at fish dying in water and says, what in the world are you talking about? You do not understand this place that you think is fertile, this place that you think that has met all of my needs, this place that you think is simply a mirage. It is not all that God has called me to. So what are you going to do about that? I'm reminded of, as an Air Force chaplain, when I went to Saudi Arabia twice, okay, and um, listen, going somewhere with this, I went there twice, and I remember one time that I didn't fly right into Dharan, I flew into Riyadh. Riyadh is a couple of hours away from Dharan. And uh, I remember in Saudi Arabia, it is so hot, you can feel the heat on your skin. We got off the plane, got in the car, and we was driving. And I had never seen such desert in my life. I was a little scared. It's like if this car break down, there's nothing out here but camels and Bedouins. And there we were, and I looked over, and it looked, I looked to my right and my left, and I looked all around, and, and it looked like I could see the heat. And I actually saw the heat coming from the ground that created, you got it a mirage. So the first thing I need you to do is to understand something. When you are in a dry place and it's just simply a mirage, as I was going from Dharan, uh, from Maria to Dharan, keep your eyes on the road. Don't stop looking right and left at the mirages that are all around you. Keep your eyes on the road. That's what that's what God told Joshua. He said, Joshua, now if you're going to be successful, first chapter in Joshua, says that they ate about the eight or so verse or so. He said, now, Joshua, if you're going to be successful in this promised land, the way you make it happen, don't turn your to the right or to the left. You keep your eyes straight ahead and you will have great success. That's the first thing you need to do when you're dealing with a mirage. Take your eyes right and left. Look straight ahead. Second thing you need to do is this. Where you are is not where you're going to stay. Just remember that. Where you are, you might be in a marriage mirage right now, your relationship mirage right now, a financial mirage right now, but that's not where you're going to stay. Remember, in 1 Kings 17 and 7, the whole story tells you that now, he, what, does, what does Elijah do? He goes to Ahab the king at the palace. And then from there, he goes to Cherith, where the brook dries up. From Cherith, he goes into Sidon, to Zarephath in Sidon, further into the territory. So he's making moves. He's moving. He's not staying in the same place. There's a hundred miles between Cherith, where, his, uh, where the water dried up, the brook dried up, to where he's going to Zarephath, where he actually receives food from the widow. Where you are right now is not where you're going to stay. God is going to move you. Here's the third thing. Here's the third thing. A mirage is the imagination of the mind. What does Paul tell us in Corinthians? Pull down the vain imaginations of the mind that exalt itself up above the knowledge of Christ. You got to take hold of my your mind and say, you know what? Wherever I am, wherever there's a mirage, I'm pulling that stronghold down right now. Wherever the mirage is, if it's a marriage mirage, relationship mirage, financial mirage, physical mirage, job mirage, whatever the case, directional, I am pulling down the vain imaginations of the mind and make them subject to Christ. I'm not going to let them exalt themselves above the knowledge that I have in Jesus Christ. What's your takeaway this morning? What's your takeaway? Know this. God is the only one that can turn your mirage into an oasis. Trust him. God is the only one that can turn your mirage into an oasis. Trust God. The Lord be with you today. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. Got more manna for you on tomorrow as we learn how to turn our dry places 
into a harvest. God bless you. Share the matter now.